this is the um, the fourth section of the chapter one lecture on viruses. I'm going to try to go a little bit faster because we've still got um, 18 slides to go. So I'm just going to um, talk about the most important things in each um, in each slide. I'm not going to read them. Uh, so that. We're talking about animal viruses right now, and these are naked animal viruses or non-enveloped animal viruses. Um, basically, how do they enter the organism? How do they enter the animal? Um, they can either enter by receptor-mediated endocytosis, or they may um, inject their, they may do like um, the bacteriophage did and inject their DNA into the host cell. So either one of those ways. And if an animal virus is enveloped, enveloped animal viruses can enter um, through um, receptor mediated endocytosis or, and that, you know, that's a similar way as, as uh, non-enveloped viruses enter can enter. Um, in endocytosis, the virus actually, the whole virus enters the cell, but if it's a naked virus and it doesn't, it, it doesn't have to enter the cell, it can just inject its DNA into the cell and that will cause the cell to make more copies of the virus. But fusion can only happen with enveloped viruses. Naked um, viruses cannot uh, undergo fusion. So HIV is an example of a virus that undergoes fusion. And it simply fuses its envelope with the plasma membrane of the host, which in this case is a, a T cell, is a white blood cell. Okay, patterns of viral infection. I'm assuming that most of you know these terms or have heard them. Infections can be acute, infections can be chronic, or they can even be asymptomatic. Um, an acute infection, uh, an acute infection is when symptoms get increasingly worse, and then um, the immune system eliminates the virus from the body. If it's chronic, you're probably going to have it for life. It's a long-term infection that you have to live with. And then some viruses actually cause no symptoms at all. They do not cause any symptoms at all, so they're asymptomatic. There are some viruses, and this example is the shingles virus that go through a latent um, period. They're chronic viruses and they emerge under usually periods of stress or just uh, certain situations in the body will cause these viruses to um, emerge and, and cause symptoms. But the shingles virus is the same virus as the chickenpox virus. So a person who gets shingles is normally older and they had chickenpox when they were a child. We usually give our children chickenpox vaccines now, but like, for example, I'm old enough, I had chickenpox when I was a child, so I could possibly get shingles later. Um, the virus is called varicella zoster. That's the name of the virus that causes chickenpox and um, also shingles. And picture B is a picture of the symptoms of shingles. They're very, very, very painful from what I understand. Um, but that's what happens when a virus um, can, you know, remains in the body and just um, causes sympt symptoms, you know, off and on um, at, you know, <laughs> you can't ever really tell when you're gonna get symptoms. Um, a person who has herpes also, whether it's the herpes that causes fever blisters or the genital herpes, either one, um, it's usually they'll usually people who have that virus will tell you that um, if you can get them to talk about it, that they'll tell you that um, it's when they're under stress a lot of times that they'll have an um, outbreak or an eruption of the virus. Okay, some viruses, and you may know this because we have a vaccine for this one, but some viruses are also cancer causing, potentially cancer causing. So they're oncogenic. Oncogenic means cancer causing. HPV, human papilloma virus, is the one that causes genital warts. So if a person contracts HPV, um, maybe when they're young in college or high school, um, they contract HPV and um, then they're treated for it, the warts go away and the warts never come back. 
but they can still get, a female can still get cervical cancer later um, from that virus. So they now have the vaccine that you're, you're supposed to give your children, um, boys and girls, um, when they're 11 years old. It's a two-stage um, vaccine. And the HPV can, can interfere, um, can cause cancer by several different ways. I'm not going to go over all these ways, but you can read them on, on, on your own time. And same thing here. This is a, a very informative um, figure um, illustration that shows a lot of human viral infections and where they actually cause problems. Um, one thing that's kind of interesting is the herpes virus, herpes simplex virus. You may not know that there's a version that can cause eye infections. There is a version, herpes simplex type 1, that causes fever blisters or cold sores. And there is a version that causes skin infections, um, which can also um, be in, infect the skin, you know, the genital region. And then um, I didn't mean to underline that. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, mean, I meant to underline herpes, herpes, herpes virus 6. And then herpes simplex type 2, of course, causes the genital herpes. Um, so you can just look at this and see the different um, names of the viruses and which area of the human body that they infect. Um, and Google them if you want to know more. Okay, with plants, viral in infections with plants. Um, basically, um, damage to the plant cells must occur to allow the virus to enter a new host. So this damage can be caused in different ways. Um, but plants can also inherit viral diseases. That's something that plants can do. Um, but uh, animals do not pass on their virus to their offspring. And viruses can also be transmitted. We call it horizontal transmission. When, for example, um, an insect or a nematode, which is a roundworm, um, this is kind of the same way as pollination occurs. You have some, some uh, pollinator that can transfer pollen to from one plant to another. Well, if they can do that, they can also trans, transmit viruses from one plant to another. So it's horizontal transmission when the virus is transferred from plant to plant, and it's called vertical transmission when the virus is inherited by the um, plant offspring. Symptoms of infection in plants can occur as hyperplasia, and they, they, they look like galls or tumors on the plant. Um, hypoplasia, thinned yellow splotches on leaves. Hyper means higher and hypo means lower. So hyperplasia is going to cause growth and hypoplasia is going to cause, you know, um, them to kind of wither. Necrosis is cell death and the, the, the area will become blackened. Abnormal growth patterns where they're just malformed and discoloration. All right, now going back to human uh, viruses. Um, one, we use vaccines to prevent viruses for the most part. Occasionally you will have a vaccine that's used in treatment, but mostly vaccines are used to prevent viruses. Um, vaccines are produced by either a weakened form of the virus or um, a killed virus or even, even little molecular subunits of the virus. And these, um, whatever's you used to make the vaccine cannot cause you, cause you to be, become sick, to, be, to show symptoms, unless there are, you know, examples where someone has gotten a flu vaccine and has gotten sick from it. Um, it is a low danger, but it's a significant danger. These viruses will revert when, once they, they're weakened or, or um, they, are not disease causing, but when they enter the host, when they enter the, the human from the vaccine, from the vaccination, they can revert back to their disease causing form by a process called back mutations. So that would cause someone to get sick from the vaccine. It is very, very rare. So um, they still give the vaccine, but they give you a choice. 
of why do we get a new flu shot every year? And that is because the influenza virus is one of those that mutates, um, has a high mutation rate. Vaccines in very few cases can be used as treatment. You can actually give them the vaccine to boost their immune system while they're actually fighting off the virus. Um, but most of the time viruses are treated with antiviral drugs. And we're going to look at two examples. This one is the example of Tamiflu. If you've ever had the flu, uh, particularly in recent years, you may have been given a, a prescription for Tamiflu. I know I was, and I was amazed because I actually went to the doctor as soon as I noticed symptoms. I, I started to feel bad very, very quickly. Um, in fact, I remember I was so weak when I was in the doctor's office that they had to help me up onto the table. But they gave me a prescription. They checked it to see that I had the flu. They gave me the prescription. I immediately filled it and took it. And literally within hours, I was better. I was better. I was way better. So um, Tamiflu works by inhibiting one of the virus's enzymes. Um, I'm not going to go through that whole entire process, but it, it, by inhibiting the viral enzymes, it inhib inhibits pr more production of the virus and further infection. And antiviral drugs for HIV, the reason that HIV, see, back when I was a child is, is when HIV was discovered in humans. You know, that's that's when we started seeing people with AIDS and um, the first people to get AIDS happened in the 1980s. And, um, the, you know, it's it was very scary because if you received a diagnosis of HIV, it was, a, you know, deadly. Um, it is not now. Um, people who have access to the anti-HIV drugs um, can live full lives as long as they take those drugs. Um, there are lots of ways that those drugs inhibit the virus's replication. So you can go through and look and read about them. I'm trying to save a little bit of time, though, um, like I told you. Um, but several different ways, and the diagram shows you the different ways, but basically inhibits the virus at some stage of, of infecting a host cell. Um, now, we've talked about viruses. Prions are not viruses. Prions are actually proteins, um, and a prion is what's responsible for mad cow disease. So it's an infectious protein. It's, it's a protein that is mutated. And viroids are single-stranded RNA pathogens that only infect plants. They don't have a capsid. It says that these potatoes have been infected by the viroid PSTV. Um, you'll have to look that one up. I'm sorry. It's some kind of potato virus. I, I don't know the name of it. Um, okay, so last, the last few pages are practice questions. Um, why are multiple antiviral drugs used together to treat HIV? And that's because in, in the hopes that if one doesn't work, on a cell that another one will. So the more that you use, that's the same reason we use many antibiotics um, now to treat bacterial infections. Um, how were viruses discovered? They were discovered in the 1930s. Uh, well, actually, the, the, we saw viruses in the 1930s. Um, in the 1800s, they actually um, discovered viruses but couldn't prove it um, because the I don't know if you remember, but um, the pasteurization process, um, Pasteur is the name of the scientist that invented the pasteurization process. Um, he invented a process to destroy bacteria from, um, you know, like maybe milk or whatever. Um, and we use that to pasteurize um, things today, different things. And anyway, they still were able to um, cause disease, so they must have been small enough that the pasteurization process didn't kill them. Um, so anyway, they were actually discovered in the 1800s without proof, 